Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How's everybody doing tonight? All right. I'd like to welcome All to the right. stage right. the lyrically acclaimed. Hello, Animation fans, and welcome to right. another iAnimate podcast. I'm your host, Larry Vasquez, and you're listening to episode 62. In this episode, we have guest Frank Abney joining us. Uh, Frank is an animator currently over at Pixar Animation Studio. He's worked previously at uh, DreamWorks Animation and as well as uh, Walt Disney Animation Studios and has had the opportunity to work on some really, really cool projects. Um, He's worked on Frozen, uh, Kung Fu Panda 3, um, Boss Baby, um, Coco, my faves. And then, uh, as well as with Brad Bird on Incredibles 2. Yeah, he, as of this podcast we recorded a couple weeks back, he had just finished up on Toy Story 4. Um, so, just has had an opportunity to work on some really, really cool projects, as well as um, his own current project called Canvas that he had had a uh, campaign for on, I think it was um, Kickstarter. Um, so it was just really neat to talk with him, uh, pick his brain in regards to some of the movies that he's worked on, uh, some of the directors he's been under, as well as his aspirations as a director himself. So um, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this podcast. He's one of our alumni, and so it was just really neat to be able to pull someone in um, who's familiar with us and um, talk with him about the industry. So listen in. Test, test, test. Awesome. All right, uh, man. Okay, cool. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> How you yeah, been? Good to see you. I've been good. Yeah, just trying to trying to bounce back after the TS4 crunch and yeah. <laughs> all right. You ready to jump into it? Yeah, yeah. All right. Frank, first of all, I just I really appreciate your time. I know as you mentioned, uh, you just finished off with uh, Toy Story 4. Um, obviously, you're a busy guy with Canvas and doing that, you know, in addition to everything else you're doing, you've got a wife and one little or two little? Two. Two little ones. Little ones, yeah. right. So you're a busy guy. So um, I know for myself, as well as our audience who's listening to this, we always just definitely appreciate you guys' time. So thank you very oh, much. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me, too. Absolutely. We've got a good list of uh, guests that we've had, and you're going to be able to add to that. So, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, nice. As I was kind of briefly talking with you before this, um, you've had a, a very cool career. You've had an opportunity to work at you know at least three of the major studios, um, mm. DreamWorks, Disney, and now Pixar. Mm. Um, some really cool movies. Uh, Big Hero 6, Frozen, uh, Kung Fu Panda 3, um, Coco, one of my faves. Um, Incredibles 2 with Brad Bird, and then now here recently uh, on Toy Story 4. So mm. I think we've got a lot of cool things to talk about. You've been in games uh, beforehand as well. Um, so, and now doing your own uh, short project on the side. So a very, yeah. very cool list of stuff to add to that um what keeps you motivated right now man uh, I, I have to say uh just I, i'm i'm I, I try to absorb everything so you know whether i'm you know the, the the a lot of the short film ideas you know that i that i have or or even things for for other you know larger projects a lot of that comes just just in everyday kind of situations, I'll be in traffic <laughs> on the way to work and I'll get a flash of something or, or, um, or I could be in the shower or I could be on my way walking to get some food or something. And just, you know, and, and, and also watching people, I think, uh, my, my mom and I, I, I kind of started this people watching thing. I, I, I say that she kind of introduced me to, <laughs> wanting to be an animator in a way, you know, just as far as the, um, observation goes, you know, just, just kind of watching people and kind of, we, we would watch people in restaurants and kind of, you know, see what's going on, seeing, you know, just the body language and, and what they're doing. And, um, I always like to kind of pick out what's, what may be going on or what's, you know, and, and even seeing people on the street, I kind of wonder like, where are they coming from and where they're going? And always a little know, story behind that, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, so how did you get into animation? how did you want to, I know you've gone through a couple different programs. You obviously been through I animate, but how did yeah, you, yeah. Um, did you always want to be in animation? I know, you know, do you always want to draw or what kind of directed you towards that path there? Uh, well, yeah, I, I always love drawing and, you know, that was, that was my first introduction to at least the art side. And then, um, I would, I would always put the characters in, in different scenarios and, and even mixing up the different cartoons that I would watch. Um, so that was always an, that was always an interest, but, um, I didn't really get the bug to want to be in animation or just 
wanting to be a filmmaker in general until um, watching The Lion King. That one, that one was the. I, I always have to to give that one. Uh, it's 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 props because that that one was the one that really lit the fire under me, uh, okay. especially because um, the uh, me losing my father and, and watching that, like I, I, there's a connection there that I haven't that I didn't have with any other movie. So very cool. Uh, being able to connect with that on a deeper level was was you know the the um, yeah that that was the catalyst for all of this. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Um, now, I know you mentioned earlier that you've, uh, and then even on, the, on your canvas um, start, or, uh, campaign starter, that you, your mom was very supportive in that. Was she oh, able yeah. to kind of come alongside a lot of this here and, hey, I'll support you wherever you need to go? Or how did that work for you and her? So she, she was always, um, or is always, uh, it's just kind of, uh, Kind of in in the in the the mindset of of you can do whatever you whatever you want to do, you know. Just you know if if you if you're willing to put the work in and um, and it, it started even as like uh, you know buying stuff that we wanted as a kid. It was it, it'd be like okay if you can if you can save up at least half, you know I'll I'll give you the other <laughs> half. Or, you know so it's it, it it was kind of instilled early in a different way. And then, you know, as we got older, you know, when, you know, thinking about goals or, or even just, just kind of setting us up for the future. It was, it was like, yeah, anything, anything, anything you want is out there. You get it, you, you know, put in the work for it and, and yeah, it, it was, always, uh, she always showed that belief in us. And um, yeah. And even now having the support of family and uh, friends like that just, helps it you know that much more very cool i love that because you got to have the support but you got to have that hard work ethic too you know mm. those go those go hand in hand um to be able to help achieve those kind of goals and stuff that came from her as well <laughs> <laughs> watching, her, watching her you know growing up like that I've, i i've said it before on twitter like my i get my work ethic from her that's uh <laughs> yeah just doing doing what you have to do and not really i guess it just not thinking about everything that it is you're doing, but just the fact that I need to do it. I need to, if I'm, if I'm after this, I need to do this to get there. So let's just do it. And <laughs> so. don't worry about everything else. <laughs> this is my path here. I gotta, I gotta keep going. Yeah. On that. So yeah. now did you go to art school originally or something out of high school? How did that work? So, um, right after high school, I went to a place that, um, ended up getting shut down after I left uh, called Brooks College and then uh, it, but it wasn't it wasn't quite what I had in mind I didn't I didn't really know what I needed to know um, so I was I was in a multimedia program so I was learning like web, web stuff and mm, you flash, know, gra like graphics that. Stuff. yeah yeah and, and so I, I I noticed that my assignments would always be tailored you know to more animation because we, we were we were learning how to keyframe and flash and you know all that stuff and and I ended up making <laughs> doing short films out of my assignment. <laughs> one of them was like a twisted version of the Three Little Pigs. <laughs> one was uh, this. I, I took a segment of the Thriller music video and okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think both of those were on Newgrounds at one point. I don't know. I don't know if you remember that website. <laughs> Which one was it? Uh, Newgrounds. They used to put all these like flash uh -huh. animation stuff on there. And, okay. Um, and so that didn't that didn't that wasn't quite what I found. I found out it wasn't quite what I needed um, because we were only going to have one Maya class in the last quarter, which I was a quarter away from graduating. So I was like. It's like I know this. This isn't enough. To, uh, it's like I know what I. I know that I don't know everything that I need, but I know that's not it. <laughs> and, uh, and so, I, I was looking up schools and ended up going to Art Institute in San Francisco. Okay. So then, um, yeah, I went there. I got my bachelor's there, and then I was able to. I was able to get start working um, while I was there, a little before graduating. So like twenty. 17 was when I got my my first job okay. um, doing some modeling help I was aging these characters on a sh on a, a short film and um, and then 
and then after that i ended up uh i was still i was still trying to get into feature that was the ultimate goal and um wasn't working out and i needed to push push my skills so um i have to i have to i have to give give the the respect to victor navone who i synced up with him while i was in college and uh he was like you know if you're as serious as as serious about animation as i think you are then you know i recommend animation mentor it was new fairly new at the time um still in its early years and then so i, I went there um came out of there got got a better job out of that but then i was still i was working in games and uh i did some a tv show pilot right out of there at Lightstream animation hmm. uh, which was great um and then got into games i worked at crystal dynamics yeah. on uh, tomb raider and so I was there for uh, almost three years. And while there, still that itch, you know, I needed to get in the film. And, um, and so, and also being around, being in games, like I, I was more focused on the technical stuff and like more, you know, physicality and, and, and I needed that acting stuff in there. And that's what, that's what drew me to like, uh, to I animate. And I was like, okay, I need to, at least take a term, you know, I could, I could, I could afford it. I could afford a term at least it's like my, my convincing, my convincing to my wife was, uh, okay, I'm going to put in, I'm going to put in the work and do what I need to do here. This is going to lead to the job Making better things. Uh, and I'm going to be able to pay off this. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, we try to keep our prices down pretty low so that it, it makes it at least reasonable, huh? <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I, I took a term there, um, got, got, a few acting shots out of it and then um i did some more personal work after and um yeah the following year i went to disney and um yeah paid off that that loan <laughs> <laughs> now you got in with your uh, talent development crew is that correct right right yeah. so how was that experience it was good it was um I, at the time I was like, it's like, I kind of like this more than production <laughs> because you, I mean, it, it was the, you know, you're not having the pressure situation of production, which I'm fine with, but, but it was like, I love just the, um, you know, syncing up with the mentors and, and just being able to, 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 to craft these shots, right, right. work with these people who, um, I mean, we had Renato Dos Anjos, we had uh, John Cars, um, uh, Brent Hammond, Nathan Englehart, Michael Franceschi. So we had the the, the soon to be supervisors on Big Hero Six, and the vets of you know John Cars and right, right. You know, and so that's what we were kind of groomed for. We were going to go on okay. Six, but uh, we all got promoted that after the first three months. So. And Frozen needed help, so we we synced up and jumped in, huh? Yeah, and got on Frozen, and, <laughs> which was my, you know, that was that was a goal in the back of my mind. I was like, kind of selfishly, like, I hope you need some help. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, <laughs> Pulling plugs on computers so that way it slowed down production. Hey, look, tug that one. Frank comes to the rescue, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that was your first big production. Was there any big, yeah. you know, learning curves during that time that? Um, it's kind of stuck mm. with you or, uh, cause I know kind of emphasy things that when you have a, it's your first, you know, first child, first this, the first that, uh, uh -oh. they're like, just stick out in your mind. I think, uh, we good? good now? Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. 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 Um, yeah. So <clears throat> I think by that time, cause I, I was kind of, I was kind of losing steam, um, you know, trying to reach out to, to feature places and, and, um, I was still working on acting stuff at home, um, but it was like it was more so just kind of trying to trying to push the stuff that I that I had, and uh, so I think the biggest struggle going in was just the, the quality bar because I was I you know working in games there's a lot of stuff where I'd be, pol I'd be polishing fingers on on something and it's like nah you don't really you don't need to do that <laughs> or uh, you know just just um, little little details that you don't really need to need to put into um certain game animation um you know and the cinematics was nice that was you know when i when i was on there then you could you could add those little 
details, but I, I kind of bounced around. I was, you know, helping on cinematics and I would do in-game stuff. I would do combat stuff. And, um, so yeah, that was, that was like when I, when I started, um, at Disney, I, I, that, that was the, the, the thing I had to like, okay, I need to, I need to step it up now. <laughs> now did you jump into, okay, so let me back up just a little bit here. Cause that seems like it would be extra challenging as well. If you're in the, um, talent development crew and then jumping into production where mm. they're at kind of a height of uh, production. Cause that's where they're, I'm sure they're, they're needing you on that. Was mm -hmm. there anything that you had to quickly adjust with or did they, were they able to ease you in a little bit on certain shots? Um, how did that work for you? Yeah. Yeah. There were, there's, there was some easing for sure. Cause after, after we were doing the tests um, during the, uh, the talent development portion, uh, we rolled on to doing some uh, promotional stuff for for the film. So, okay. So we got a little taste there, and then we started doing some, um, you know, some some crowd stuff here and there, like some cycles. And then then we would get some background characters, you know, the background people that were in, you know, hero shots. And then um, and then we would we would get some shots here and there. So. Um, yeah, it was, it was a nice kind of, kind of ramp into it. It didn't feel too, too abrupt. <laughs> which is nice. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> now, Walt Disney Animation Studios has just, I mean, each studio is really cool. They've got their own personalities and such. Mm. Um, but Walt Disney Animation Studios, it has such a rich history. Um, mm. was there anything there that you took, uh, that you've taken from your, throughout your career that you just really learned there and you were able to, you know, from that personality mm -hmm. of that studio? Um, whether it would be who you worked with or the philosophies or anything along that lines. I'd say one of the things that, that John Cars told me um, has always stuck with me and it was um, just to make it about the work. Like don't, it was like, don't, don't f focus on any of the BS politics, anything going on, make it about the work. And that's, that, that's, that's it. And, and so, you know, I, I kind of, that's what I try to, keep with me now and um and on the on on the more artistic side um there is something that i i've i've held on to just just as far as like process goes um you know with uh with blocking or, or presenting an idea mm -hmm. um it was uh nathan Englehart. he he was the one that he, he said something along the lines of um of do whatever you need to to sell the shot okay so, so that, that was something I, I, you know, I posted a, uh, <laughs> I posted a, a progression reel from Coco and, um, and I got some questions like, is this, is this blocking? It seems a little further than blocking. And, and, <laughs> and that was like, that was exactly that. I was like, I felt like I needed to do this so I could sell what I had in my mind. So whether it's laying down three poses or 300, like w whatever I need to do to sell it, that's, that's, you know, that, that's what I, that's what I try to do. Very cool. So just depending on the shot, whatever the shot entails. Yeah. So some things may be pretty bare. Some things may, you know, seem, seem more fleshed out than it, than it is. Gotcha. So. Okay. Now I do have, maybe I'm jumping ahead too far, but we're, oh, we're okay. going to come back. No, no, that's uh, <laughs> on one of my questions here is just your workflow. Um, mm. As I mentioned to you earlier, I uh, jumped back to iAnimate to take a, a uh, workshop six class with tall and you know, he's mm. been at DreamWorks. He was at I think blue sky before that But has now been at Pixar for quite some time mm -hmm. Him just talking about how his uh, workflow is has changed Well, you've been at Walt Disney DreamWorks and now Pixar mm -hmm. and all three uh, from what I understand have very different kind of workflows as far as um, mm. Culture has your workflow changed much from studio to studio um not much. I try, I try to, um, it, usually there, there's a way that, uh, people present the work, uh, that, that differs. And, uh, so I, I try to still work how I'm comfortable and then I'll present it how you want to see it. Okay. Even though that's not how it is under the hood. So, okay. you know, with, with Disney, you know, say they, they prefer to see, you right. know, so, I'll, I kind of, I kind of bounce back and forth between, you know, I, my, my method is a little hybrid. You know, I, I do, I do still work pretty much pose to pose, but it's a mixture of layering and, 
you know, so I, I like to set the whole keys, but you know, I keep everything in spline just so I can see the timing as I'm working on it and all. Yeah. And so when I go to show there, you know, I would, I would convert it to stepped or, you know, make sure I'm, I'm only shooting out those keys or, um, in DreamWorks and Pixar, I, I've just kind of worked. It, it was a little more just like, it was, it was more open to, you know, however the, the animators worked. And, okay. uh, there were, there were certain directors that, that, you know, like, um, on, on, uh, boss baby, um, Tom McGrath, uh, who's, who was, who's great to, great to work with. I, um, I got, I got the, the note early on that, that, that he kind of prefers to see the poses, um, early on. Um, but it was kind of, it was kind of loose. Like some people would show even reference to kind of, Get an idea. Yeah, yeah. Just show where where they wanted to go with it, um, and then some. Some showed steps. Some showed spine. So your typical workflow would be what? Uh, I, I usually start start with thumbnails. Um, I like to just kind of get a visual representation of what the shot's going to be, just you know, comic book style, like just thumbnailing it out. Um, sometimes I'll go deeper. Sometimes it's just one image and one pose that kind of dictates that particular beat mm -hmm. and then um from there i'll usually bring that to to um i don't always shoot reference but if i'm shooting reference i'll bring that with me and i'll kind of act out my scene to that and then uh and then i'll kind of do something like you know whatever whatever feels natural um because sometimes you know you can kind of feel when something is a little too forced or uh and I and I love. I mean, when I was a kid, I wanted to be an actor. So I love. Uh, I love. I love acting out the, acting out the shots. So um, even if I'm not recording it, I'm still, I'm still acting it out um, some way. And then from there, yeah, jump into, jump into the computer and and um, just initially, I, I want to. Um, I kind of gravitated toward figuring out the rhythm of the shot first. Mm. So instead of setting poses first, a lot of times I'll just kind of kind of lay out the, the, the beats and the, and the, the path of, of the character, whatever, whatever, however they're going to navigate through the scene. Um, just try to lay that out and think of it in a more of a music way of um, just finding that, finding that rhythm. Like what's, what's an inter interesting beat to this shot or, you know, and, uh, and that, that kind of came from, there was a, one of the tests I did at Disney. Um, it was a Vanellope test that I had to do. The, the, the thing was Vanellope running up, presenting a gift to Ralph. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the idea was just she had to present a gift and then there had to be a change of emotion. And so um, I had her run up with this gift. She presents it and she had the glitching problem. So she accidentally glitches out of the way and the present drops. Um, <laughs> and then she's like, and scrambles to it and picks it up and presents it. And, um, and so the run up, I was like, okay, I could do it just a normal run, but, uh, it, 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 it wasn't, it, it didn't have that energy to it. So I was kind of like, kind of, you know, just trying to figure out a rhythm to it. And, and then, so thinking of that and then the timing of the presentation, the glitch, and then running, you know, just just finding that that rhythm and mixture of speeds in there, like that was, that that's that's always my my go to. Very cool. So that's the fun stuff for me. <laughs> Very nice. And then you do you uh, spline block or did you? Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. That's I, I still I still do the whole poses, but yeah, I just keep it in spline. spline. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. All right. Um, so from Disney over to DreamWorks, how did that come about? Uh, so when we were getting toward the end of, uh, big hero six, um, I, my, I knew my contract was coming up and I had a friend, actually the, the same, the guy who I had in, uh, the workshop I took at iAnimate, Dave Harden, he, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, yeah. he came to visit Disney. I heard he was working on Kung Fu Panda three. And so, uh, okay. Okay. Contracts ending soon. I'm always, I'm always trying to think ahead and navigate like, <laughs> and, and, and so, <laughs> and so, um, yeah, talking, talking, 
about that project with him. I was like, okay, maybe I can sync up and um, sync up with the timing of that, and um, you know, talking to to people like Jamal and and Dave, and you know, just about the studio, and um, you know, every there was always high praise for the studio, and and so I already knew, you know, hearing it from from them that it would be a good place, and so. Um, I got in, um, it was supposed to be for uh, Penguins of Madagascar, um, but things things kind of switched up and they, they ended up hiring internally. So then um, I, I jumped on promotional stuff. And so I did that. And while I was, while I was learning uh, Primo, their animation software, I asked if someone can uh, install Poe in a shot for me. <laughs> and so... Uh, to learn to learn Primo, I I animated Poe. I did an acting shot with him, and then I did a um, uh, two acting shots actually. And then I was I actually showed the uh, the head of animation on Kung Fu Panda Three because his office was like right right diagonal from where I sat. Nice. So it's like it's better to ask about this than him. So, <laughs> so I asked him uh, he, to check it out. He was looking at it. He thought I grasp the character pretty well very cool and so um yeah he he he's like it's like how about you do a physical test i want to see how you handle you know his, his weight and so is that the one who uh, comes running in jumps and yeah yeah that was the one i did killer man <laughs> and I remember so, that one. yeah and then um i did some more promo stuff for for penguins but then um but yeah they they uh let me know they're putting me on the show and then so I was I was originally because of this because of the switch up that happened I was only going to stay for like a month, um, but then that month turned into like almost three years. So Man, that's awesome, yeah. very cool, hard work, and then being friendly too pays off, huh? Mm. Yeah, <laughs> um, so you were there during uh, you mentioned earlier Kung Fu Panda Three Boss Baby, um, yeah. Any other ones that you were doing that time? Um, I started doing some testing on Everest after uh, okay. after Boss Baby, but um, yeah, it was it was really early though. Gotcha. Uh, Boss Baby was a fun project. Yeah, yeah. That, that was one that kind of uh, surprised me, I think, um, and I think probably a lot of people um, when they first had kind of mm -hmm. seen it and uh, full movie um, versus just you know early concept and stuff. Uh, anything in particular you enjoyed on that one? Oh. I'd say one of my favorite moments was getting to getting to pay homage or homage or you know how, <laughs> to uh, to my my BMX background. You know, oh, I do yes, yes. bike stunts and stuff. So um, I got I requested to animate the the shower. They're they're running from the nanny and they're on the bike going downhill. <laughs> Trains coming. They jump. They jump over the train. It 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 you know the the imagination sequence it, it blended into that and their bike turned into a motorcycle and they did a uh he did a, a superman double c grab over the over the um <laughs> train <laughs> oh no no no! it was a superman one-handed one-handed seat grab yeah and then uh <laughs> and then uh so that that was that was great to be able to bring something personal from my background to to the show and that's fantastic and so yeah. for those that don't know listening here uh frank has a background in bmx biking here and i posted some videos yeah. some, doing some really really cool stuff there's a, there's an old one on youtube that's like probably 10 plus years old <laughs> yeah yeah you, you can you can find it you don't have to do too much digging to find All right. it <laughs> we'll keep that in our show notes but yeah if not then yeah do a, a quick search for bmx <laughs> Uh, and, and Frank here. Um, yeah, that's a really cool project. That's a neat opportunity to be able to incorporate some passion that you already are with animation versus some, and, and with something yeah. that you have real life experience with. Yeah. Now, um, Tom McGrath was uh, on that project, right? That was his. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which is really, really cool opportunity. He's a funny, funny guy. Um, anything from that that you kind of learned from him in regards to storytelling? Oh. Uh. And he was, he was great. Like, I, I mean, for one, I have to say it took me a little while to not hear Skipper when he talked, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when, he, when he spoke, I, I, I couldn't help but hear that penguin. Uh, but, um, but just yeah, he was, it, boys. he was so, he was, he, he just, his, his eye for timing and, and just comedic timing and, uh, and entertainment. 
was was something that that I really admired and yeah still try to try to keep in mind oh I think we froze again. yeah you froze I can still hear you maybe she needs a chance to catch up here very good all right we're good okay did I did I cut out at all no your your voice is fine oh okay okay <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're good cool. um and then okay so how did that work out from going from DreamWorks to Pixar so I had been uh so the I actually connected with Pixar back in like 2012, 2011, 2012, um, which was kind of, uh, it, it kind of changed the whole way I look at working because I, I just, the, the story behind that. Um, so I, 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 you know, I mentioned my dad passing um, and I found out the, the truth behind how he passed, which was, you know, it was behind drugs. Uh, and so, you know, the only way I could really process that was to put it in my work. So I found a, I found an interview online, um, guy talking about, uh, he was a heroin addict and talking about trying to get over that and, you know, needing help and, you know, he couldn't do it alone. And, and, um, and so I, I really identified with that and I was thinking, you know, channeling what my dad must have felt because, um, you know, my first year, you know, he was in rehab, so I knew he was, he was trying, but, you know, just, it, 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 it got a hold of him. And, uh, and so I animated to that line and which, which I had, you know, I, I hadn't seen anything talking about that kind of subject in animation, but right, I was right. like, I need to do something. <laughs> so <laughs> I did, I did it. And, um, and I showed, uh, I showed um, Victor Navone from Pixar just just for feedback. We I we had kept in touch after you know connecting when I was in college, and um, so I would shoot him shots every now and then uh, just to see what he thought. And um, and so um, yeah, I got some I got some good feedback, and he actually showed some people here. And um, and when they were hiring, I, I applied, and uh, and it was it was around the time of Brave, and. Uh, it didn't work out at the time um, because they, they needed someone to hit, hit the ground running. I didn't have any feature experience at the time, but, um, but w what was, what was good about that is that it, it kind of taught me what to do as far as like what to work on, what, what is going to sell me as an animator. And uh, cause you know, you always get that question of, of what, what distinguishes, how do, how do I make, yeah. How do I make my, my stuff stand out? And, and it's like being, showing who you are in your work mm -hmm. and that, that was that was the lesson i learned in that and that kind of changed that whole my whole mindset with that and so that opened the door you know years ago and so keeping in contact once i got feature experience then um then you know around the time i think we actually started talking when i was at disney and then DreamWorks, it was always, you know, just, just trying to line up the timing because it was somewhere I, I always, I always wanted to be. And, uh, back kind of in the Bay area too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, um, I think it was around the time of Kung Fu Panda three actually when we reconnected and then, yeah, after boss baby rap and, you know, some projects got canceled and, um, you know, it was, it was, it was a little, a little dead at, at the moment so it, it and, and the timing worked out and it just kind of it synced up and so cool. um yeah I, I reached out and and um yeah came in came in on coco <laughs> what a cool project to to get to work on that that's honestly one of my favorite ones from pixar i think um mm. the animation the lighting the music, the the whole storytelling, it was just, that was a, again, one of the ones that just really knocked out of the park for me. Um, and yeah. Lee Anchorage just um, obviously had been with Pixar since early, early, early days. Yeah. Uh, so I can't imagine getting someone else better as far as storytelling and, and learning from him. Uh, yeah, he, he was, um, he's very specific and very um, just, just dialed in on, on, on the, the the story, the editing, like what he what he wants out of the characters and being authentic, um, and I really appreciated that out of out of a, a project so um, 
culturally specific and, and animation that we haven't um, dug into as much in at Pixar. And so, um, yeah, that, that, that's just, that, that's another thing that, you know, I try to keep with me as well. Like if, if you're going to do a project diving into another culture that, you know, isn't necessarily your own, you know, do the research and, and, uh, you know, bring some truth to it. And, and they did exactly that. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, one of the things that's pretty cool too, that and I want to kind of get back onto that, but just you talking about, um, the subject matter, you know, with your dad in regards to animation, mm. um, Jamal Bradley doing his substance and mm, yeah, yeah. a very, um, uh, not G level kids type stuff per se. Mm -hmm. Um, Carlos, uh, help me with his last Baena. name. Baena. Yeah, there we go. All right. Baena. Um, doing, uh, Lenoria. And so just getting to see a variety of, and I know Brad Bird talking about, you know, animation is not a genre. Animation is not a genre, you know, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a medium. So it's just neat to, yeah. get to see a lot of these stuff that, and even with your project canvas to pull a lot of that in, um, in a unique, again, stuff that we don't get to see, I guess, quite as much here in the, in the States, um, right, right. push a lot of this kind of stuff, which is really, really cool. Okay. Yeah, that, that yeah that those um, and it, it was great. I actually helped out on both of those projects, which is which is fun. <laughs> um, um, yeah, the, like just just I, I feel like I feel like nowadays with with um, I think studios are trying to you know catch up to to being more showing more representation and 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 pushing for uh, more mature stories. But some, I mean, you 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 already have a brand and you already, you know, it, it's, it's going to take a while. Yeah. Yeah. So it's up to, it's up to us to, to create our own stuff. And, and that's the neat part. I mean, you know, we've talked about this a lot on podcasts, it just with other, other media or avenues, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon. Um, but even just what you're doing here with the Kickstarter, was it Kickstarter or is it a uh, Kickstarter? Yeah. Okay. Um, I was looking up that real quick. Your goal was 40 K mm -hmm. not, not a small chunk of change there. <laughs> and, um, you know, you weren't asking for 10 grand. Uh, and not only did you hit that, you've exceeded that and you still got 12 days to go. And so it's just, it's really neat yeah. for me to see it's feasible. You know, it's, yeah. it's very, very feasible to do that kind of stuff. Um, obviously you're very, um, I'm sure I'm looking for active on the, you know, on online mm. and such. So you've been able to build a community and, and uh, connection there. And so it's just neat to see that people are willing to put their money where their mouth is uh, and to see stuff. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was pretty shocked by all that. Cause I, I, I mean, it, it was, um, it's one thing to have uh, a certain following, but, but also wondering if people will, 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 will do something, you know, when, when, when you need, when you need, you know, help. And, and, and so I was really, uh, humbled by the response mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, we hit half, half of the goal in, in, you know, a few days. And, and I was like, <laughs> what the, <laughs> what is going on? And, and it just, I, I think it just comes back to just, you know, um, you know, being, being humble and being, uh, uh, open to, you know, talking to people and helping people and, you know, all that stuff comes back, you know, in, in different ways, not to say that that's a direct, you know, it, it just, it, it comes back in different ways. And, and, you know, I try to, I try to respond to everybody. Um, I try to, you know, leave my email open and all that stuff and, you know, help where I can. And um, so it was nice to, to see, you know, when I needed some, when I needed the help, you know, people came and, and, uh, and it, yeah, it was, it's, um, uh, and I'm, I'm still, I'm still floored by it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, okay. Speaking of help here, how did that work for you as far as getting artists? I, I mean, you got some really cool names on there. Uh, Dylan Ekron, a phenomenal, oh, yeah. phenomenal modeler. Um, you got, uh, TB Choi, Randy Bishop, just some amazing, mm -hmm. amazing artists. So how did, how did pulling a lot of those guys in with you work for you? Just, Career-wise, well, you've been with you know in the industry for a while, or because I mean, again, yeah, I mean, time is difficult. We we're all <laughs> really busy, so it's just neat to see guys being able to come behind you on this. Yeah, and one of the things was was kind of um, you know people that I people that I'm following, 
um, you know, I get an idea of does this person do work outside of their normal work? Do, uh-huh. you know? And so, you know, that, that was one thing to kind of identify who would possibly jump in and uh, also leaning on, you know, who have I worked with in the past? Who, who, who I have, who do I have a previous relationship with? And um, although Dylan didn't, Dylan and I didn't work, together closely we were both we both worked on uh big hero six and mm-hmm. um so we had that at least you know and and i love his work i love you know he has a really nice design sense to you know his his, his hand-drawn work and uh his modeling like what he brings to that and so i was like it's like man i gotta I gotta get this guy because i i initially started uh, the modeling process with um a co-worker at dreamworks uh his name is uh, bear williams and um he actually did the first iteration of, of grandpa and, okay. uh, and then, and then he went on to, um, uh, what's that studio? Well, he, yeah, he, he ended up going to, to be head of modeling at another studio. And, um, and so, um, you know, I, 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 I held off asking Dylan. Um, I, well, actually, no, no, not, no, it was, I remember now it was, I, I, I drafted the email and I thought I sent it and never heard from him <laughs> and I never actually, it was still in my drafts. And, um, and so, um, you know, I reached out to him about doing the other two characters. And, uh, so we got, we got the, the mom done. Uh, her name is Amara. She, he did, he did an amazing job with her and just to keep the, keep the, I wanted to keep the modeling consistent. And so I had him, I had him do, do, uh, another version of grandpa that was, you know, um, closer to the mom. I actually had him, he built it from the mom's model. Okay. And then, and then we had the, um, the, uh, the little girl made, uh, the granddaughter, um, Ara, she, she was actually made from the mom's model as well. And so Universal they, all, they all share the same, uh, <laughs> geometry and yeah. topology. And, and so that's amazing. Um, so we got that, and but but even before that, just just getting the characters, um, I had been following Randy Bishop for a while, and so phenomenal artist, yeah. I saw that he did freelance, and I was like, huh. <laughs> so I I reached out and um and pitched him the project and stuff, and um sent him some reference of you know I had some actor reference of kind of what I was trying to pull from, and he knocked it out like. Yeah, he's he he had he had he showed some iterations. It was like a few of them, and then I saw him right away. It's like that one right there, yeah. <laughs> and then we 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 locked in on that. And then um, TV choice work as well. Like I had seen her stuff all over Instagram and Twitter, and and um, it's like man, it'd be nice to get get um, a female touch to to the female characters, and um, and so she designed you know mom and granddaughter um or daughter and granddaughter and and so uh yeah it just it, it just all ended up working out and then just from there you no know, now that you have content now it's it's a little easier to pitch to get other people involved because that that initial that starting phase is was the tough part because then because my whole thing was and not even just was with, with this project it was I mean, even getting in the industry i had this issue with like i i want to make sure people take me seriously that I'm, you know, (laughs) I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, this isn't just talk. (laughs) So So now, yeah. uh, Did you have multiple different riggers on this one from what I understood? Yeah. Two, two riggers. So I had, um, uh, Daniel Arada. He did, he did the uh, rig for the grandfather. Um, and then he did the body rig, uh, for Amara. And then, and then I had, um, uh, another guy, Dylan Hoffman, he, um, I actually, I actually had him as a past student learning animation. <laughs> oh, cool. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it helps as a rigger for sure. Yeah. You got some animation background, you know what your, your goals is in, in rigging. So yeah, yeah, definitely. And so he, he actually finished off, uh, Mari did the face rig. So I was able to, um, animate her, um, uh, for the teaser and, and we still we still have some more some more work to do on there. We tried to do just enough to get me where I needed to go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, who's been animating primarily on this? Yourself? Um, I just I, I animated the whole teaser. Okay. Uh, and then I do 
I do have some other animators on um, on some other parts of the short that's that's been done so far. Um, trying to make sure I don't forget anyone's name or even, I don't know if I don't know if they if they even <laughs> uh, can say. Yeah, I'll, I'll hold up on that. But yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> so for the teaser, you did all the animation. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Okay. So now, just out of curiosity, maybe you have to refresh my memory on the uh, Kickstarter. Your goal for that is to to do what with it? So Both financially, the the goal hmm. that you have, as well as ultimately. Yeah. So so the goal with the uh, the the forty thousand was was basically to, to take it to finish. You know, finish finish up any uh modeling rigging uh lighting like all the all you know there's a lot there's a lot of work to be done on you know set building and um yeah the the lighting and rendering is a big one and um yeah just just getting getting that out and also music um mm. my composer jermaine jermaine Stigall, he's he's been doing an amazing job just on the, the temp music and, but you know we want to get uh, live, you know, and have them conduct some some live mu musicians for the film, cool. and um, so getting all that going, just just bringing the quality, and also um, allowing us to apply to festivals and and uh, you know a, any any extra beyond that is going to help with, with you know bringing that quality, and also yeah you know with with festival submissions, and also being to being able to go to these festivals, you know, to be there in person. So nice. Now yeah. who's doing the lighting? If you don't mind me asking, uh, the lighting, um, I'm, I'm probably going to butcher his name. <laughs> I haven't actually heard the correct pronunci pronunciation, but, uh, I think it's not, a, not a what, uh, jump taxa. Uh, Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was looking at it beforehand and that shot with the grandpa just coming into the room with all the, uh, the canvas, mm. uh, really nicely done. Yeah, really nice. Oh, that. oh thanks. Yeah, he, he really, he's he's a jack of all trades. He he actually did like he did the, all the surfacing in the room. The As well, huh? Yeah, he did. Uh, he did all the 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 environment uh, surfacing and the lighting, and then I have uh, Meg Higginbottom. She did she did all the surfacing for the characters. Very cool. Now, one of the things I really just I've heard you mention before, and then watching the canvas type stuff, uh, is that just that storytelling. Mm. What have you learned throughout the your years? Uh, obviously, Pixar is one of their uh, qualities is just the ability to tell stories. Mm. Worked on Incredibles two with Brad Bird. Um, anything in particular that you've taken now as you're kind of going through uh, Canvas and developing it and going, you know what? I need to stage it this way. And this is, you know, I remember Brad talking about this or um, anything like that that kind of comes to mind. Um, as you've been yeah. crafting this, I think the number the number one thing is it, it, it kind of it relates to animation as well. It's just just what you want to say and boiling everything involved down to what the simplest form to communicate that mm. would be. <laughs> and so <laughs> you know it, the the film started off like nine minutes or maybe even longer than. You know, just kind of keeping that in mind, trimming it down to seven, then trimming it down to six, and and like you know, so it's it's like trying to keep trying to keep that in mind, and also um, also not 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 shying away from uh, putting some truth or 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 being vulnerable in in what you're telling. So you know, it, you know, we we you've seen loss in in animation before, you know how many parents are gone in old Disney movies. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, to also show myself in this as well. Like aside from the inspirations, you know, behind my niece and, and, and mom and grandpa and like, you know, just uh, that inspiration, but there's also the inspiration just as an artist and, and you know, I mean, as a person in general, like uh, dealing with loss and how that affects your your how you you know your other passions and um and so yeah just just yeah telling the truth and and telling it in the simplest way you can you know we get we get wrapped up in the you know the type of rendering and the you know all the all the shiny stuff but right. then 
but it's like if that if that core thing isn't there you know it doesn't matter how well it looks you know if you ask someone uh you know how you like something you're like oh yeah it was great like what would you like about it <laughs> it, it looked great <laughs> you know i i, I want to i want some more out of it you know, <laughs> other than the animation school or look yeah great. I, I want i want people to feel something um that's yeah, great that, that's all that's all stuff that i've taken from you know these different studios and just as a movie watcher as well <laughs> That's very. Really, that's really neat too, because that's really, uh, one of the things that Tall Schwartzman has been kind of reiterating this uh, workshop for me uh, in the whole class is just that clarity, you know. Hmm. Um, and okay, is this needed? Yeah. Well, you know, and as animators, it's like, yeah, but I like to do that. And, and there's one I'm not going to call him out. It look, it looked cool, but he, and it just it wasn't what was needed. And and mm. Tal was like, you know what? I'm sure you're having a good time with it. Was some overlap on some clothing. Mm. He's like, I'm sure you're having a good time animating that. He's like, but you know, it, it's distracting. It's yeah. not needed. It's, it, let's let's keep it at its simplest idea, and uh, that's not always easy to do. I think oftentimes. Yeah. So. As as animators, and I think as artists in general, you you want to. You want to show off what you're capable of, <laughs> but you know, at the same time, it's like the, the, I think the same, you know, especially like when we're looking at reels, like what's, you know, it, it's just as important to show what you can do as, as showing, um, or it's just as, it's just as important, uh, to show restraint and what you, what you can hold back and what you can, uh, just present in a way that, you know, it, it may not it may not be the best way of showcasing all that you can do on the animation side, but it can present what you can do as a storyteller and, and as someone that can see, see the, the, see the piece for what it is and what it needs and knowing when to pull back and, and you know, what's, yeah. Yeah. That's it. What's cool too is that on uh, the teaser for uh, canvas when, um, so I'm, it's his daughter, she kisses him on the forehead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Really cool, just a nice scene. But I love the part when, as she leaves, what's dead center? That oh, door. the door. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like when you when you set things up nicely, it's like ah, oh, that was a good trick, you know. <laughs> Keep it down <laughs> to its simplest right. form. It it is. It's crafting something, mm. um, and it it just it, you could feel it then. You could see it now, and it's just it's much more impactful. So um, that's always a neat trick when you actually pull it off. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that that was exactly the what I I wanted people to get that because I was I wanted them to see you know when she when she says goodbye and walks away you know what is he left with and yeah so it, yeah that was that was good. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought that was pretty cool too. I think on that um, something you released today on the uh, kind of breakdown. Oh yeah. yeah. First pulls them in. They're uh, have a, a strong depth of field, so they're they're blurred mm -hmm. out. The thing that's in focus, though, is that the, where he's supposed to be kind of be going or drawn mm. to, you know. Mm -hmm. and so it's just it's just neat when you see a lot of this stuff that um, people like yourself, when they craft it in, it's if you've done again done well, you're keeping it. What's the core idea? It really just sells that that main part when done well. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Good thanks. Good stuff there, man. <laughs> um, just again, out of curiosity, um, any of your favorite. Uh, projects you've worked on throughout the years any any ones that kind of come to mind that you're just like mm. yeah I, I have to say uh i mean uh frozen because it was my my first film that so that that will always hold you know a, a certain place whether i you know um whether it was, it was you know the, the the type of film i would make or not you know it, it uh it was a nice quality bar to jump in on and it was mm -hmm. good good team to be a part of and and uh you know just the 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 message in the story and, and stuff and um so that was that was good on a on a on a personal career level as far as like just as a film my favorite to work on um yeah it's it, 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 it would have to be uh it, it's hard because like Incredibles 2 and Coco have like different different reasons but I, I think um um yeah somewhere somewhere with those two I, I think so for with Coco it was just just the um the 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 level the level of 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 storytelling and and digging into 
the research and, and uh, pulling out the, the emotion just in, in, I don't know, it, it made me appreciate the culture more as well. Um, you know, how, how it was crafted and um, I think just, just the, 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 the willingness to go there and <laughs> just like, you know, just cause, cause I mean, we, we've had, we've had films that talk about loss or, or talk about, um, um, uh, the afterlife or, or, you know, day of the dead and, and, but, um, yeah, being, being a part of it was, a was a, a, a different thing. And, and also for the studio to do that and seeing the reaction to, to everyone that felt well represented you know when it came out like that was that was really uh it 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 was it was humbling and and also um just just that that gratification that you get from from you know watching a film that you were part of like that was on a whole different level uh, Mm. of gratification and and just just being thankful and uh you know to to have, have lined up with that project and gotcha yeah what about incredibles working with uh brad bird on the second one yeah that that was that was great because um for one brad <laughs> you know he he his his uh his directing and his his kind of he, he has this ability to um to pull energy out of you when you, you feel like you know you're, you're ready to be done <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> just like his pe- his pep talks like it's just like like yeah, yeah, you know, you 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 want to you want to you want to deliver. <laughs> Very and, cool. Um, and you know, just being a part of that franchise that was started um, years ago, and mm-hmm. and um, it it was it was different for me because I, I was I wasn't expecting much going in because I was like, okay, a lot of the people who worked on the first are still here, um, <laughs> and I don't I don't know what kind of opportunities I'm going to get, but it completely surprised me and, and, uh, you know, getting to animate, you know, pre- yeah, all the main characters. And I got to, got to help out on, on Frozone's library, you know, mm-hmm. doing his poses, his facial poses for the animators to use and, right on. um, working with Tony for and Dave Mullins on that stuff, just like, you know, getting his poses dialed in and then drawers from Tony and, and kind of making sure those were, those were good to go for, for us to use and um and then just yeah just animating those iconic characters and and also kind of a full circle because that movie was the one that made me want to you know go more toward the, the cg side because uh-huh. i was i when in college after i saw that i was like i i'd, I'd seen you know 3d movies before but but the the level of storytelling there it kind of made me think about the whole 3d side differently gotcha. <laughs> and I'm, you know seeing like and which which is which is weird because yeah it has nothing to do with the medium or you know what's you know the way to deliver the film but um but just how that movie was crafted because it wasn't just it wasn't a superhero movie it was a it was a it was a film about um you know a, a character who loved something it was taken away from him and and He's, he's struggling to get that back and, and, uh, and, um, you know, and, and it's something that's, you know, just, it's, it's a natural, a natural gift and to have, to have that being, have that looked at as something negative and something, you know, uh, that you have to hide from just because it's different and, you know, other people have done things you know with their powers that kind of you know it, it just yeah, yeah it was something something deeper and also dealing with family issues and it was like again stuff that you that i hadn't seen in much in animation and you know you got the parents arguing you got questions of infidelity you got you know it's like, <laughs> like this this stuff that you you know he he, he thinks about this stuff as just just the film like it's not it, yes yeah, it happens to be animated but <laughs> right <laughs> yeah so that, was, that was nice i know you got to get here so i'm gonna ask you a couple more questions oh, yeah. um, toy story 4 uh, again kind of coming back to even with incredibles 2 where you go these are just some iconic characters within the animation industry well you can't get much more iconic than buzz and woody and <laughs> that whole gang there uh did you enjoy your time working on toy story 4 was there anything there that 
I know Tal had mentioned just the differences and now, you know, uh, having come off of Incredibles 2 where you got a lot of this fleshy animation now to go into mm -hmm. toys where you don't have that. And was there any other challenges that you had faced now transitioning to that kind of movie? Yeah. I'm, um, yeah, I can't, I can't say too much, but yeah, I mean the, that was, that was it right there. Just the paying, paying respect to material, you know, if, if the characters, you know, uh, hard plastic then you treat them like hard plastic and you, you know <laughs> it's 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 hard to let go of of wanting to articulate certain things but but you know when you, you see it and and I think that's why those those films are as successful as they are from the uh art side or or you know just just I guess you're just just being engaged in the film alone like you you watch watch, watch the first one again and um yeah, the technology isn't the same as it is now, but you know they they had a charm to the characters. Oh yeah, and, you know how they acted, how they moved. Like, yeah, it's it's a that was that was definitely a challenge, but it was a welcome challenge. <laughs> it was <laughs> it was fun. To, yeah. Now, did you get to animate much on the? Uh, and I don't remember their names off the hand. Their characters, but Keen and Peel. Oh yeah, Keen and Peel's car the duck and bunny. Um, yes, there you go. Uh, I had, I had them in the background in, in some of my shots, but I didn't, okay. I didn't get to, I didn't get to touch them too much. <laughs> I was, I was mainly, I was mainly working like Woody was, was the main person that I was working with for the majority of the, very cool. My time on the film. Anything that you did particularly to gear up to animate with Woody? I mean, obviously we've grown up around that, but I mean, that's a lot different than going, okay, this is how I think he is versus now actually having to animate him and move like he's supposed to. Was there anything that you had to do uh, coming off of, like I said, some of those other movies now to jump on something so iconic? Did you watch some of the past ones that they have? Oh, yeah. Yeah, those, they, yeah, going back into those, into those films where, yeah, just watching those over and over and, um, yeah, starting an animation test just to kind of get the feel of, of how, how he, how he moves and, um, yeah, the, the, the films were big, just, just going in there and, and kind of identifying, um, those limitations, but even doing that once you're in it, you know, then you really get to see like what the limitations are, you know, cause I mean, you, you can go off of what you're seeing, but then it's like when you're in it, you're like, Oh no, he, <laughs> he doesn't, don't use his shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> no shoulders. Um, we want to, you know, you have the hard plastic head attached to your soft body. Like you want to make sure that head is, is, you know, feels like that basically just uh -huh. honoring those, those materials. And yeah. Very cool. Okay. Last question. We're obviously, like I mentioned earlier, you, you talk a lot about storytelling. Is there anything that you'd eventually like to do in the future if you could, uh, are you just enjoying animation or do you want to eventually direct your movies? Yeah, that's, that's the, um, yeah, I love animating and 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 I love storytelling. And, uh, yeah, I, I definitely want to tell my own my own stories. And uh, and if I can if if I can fit it in, I'll do some animation on them as well. <laughs> you know, because you have you know people like Pete Doctor and you know uh, uh, that would I don't know I don't know when the last time he's done it, but there's the the rumor he would he would try to do at least one shot in that in in his films. I mean, even Brad and in. in uh, in uh, the Iron Giant, you know, he did the, the caffeine, the uh -huh. Garth stuff. And <laughs> so they, that's something you can't let go of, but I definitely want to want to uh, uh, tell my own stories and um, get those out there. So, awesome. Yeah. All right. I know you've got to go this hour my way too fast, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I know, yeah, I did. So we'll have to get you in on another uh, podcast maybe in the future. Good luck with Canvas. Um, I look forward to hearing how that continues to progress. Um, but just really do appreciate your time, Frank. Oh, man, my pleasure. And thank you for having me. Awesome. All right. Hey, thanks so much. Take care. All right. See you, man. From gym class to in class, pass off a global. The only with a mobile. Can't you see like total? Getting larger and wasting taste.